Now we're going to talk about wind. So wind is just the movement of air from one place to another. Um, wind, um, air moves, and so wind is the movement of air. from places of high pressure to low pressure. Now the speed that the wind is moving, so how fast it's going and the direction it goes. Um, so speed and direction are caused by three things and we're gonna talk about those three things in turn. The first is the pressure gradient force. Okay, the second is um, the Coriolis effect. And the third is friction. Okay, so we're gonna go through each of these. Um, the first one, the pressure gradient force, is kind of the big one that you're going to want to learn. And it can be sometimes the hardest to visualize. So I have a trick that I, I use and hopefully it will help you. Um, so the first is again, that pressure gradient force. Okay, and this is really, um, I think of it as the slope between the high pressure center and the low pressure center. So what am I talking about? Or really, what is it? It is the change um, in pressure on the surface. And that says Earth's surface. Um, so if you were to think about this, we're gonna look first in a side view. Okay, so we'll imagine we have our land and here is like a little house, just for reference. So you re remember that we're looking at the side. Um, now this is not to scale, but if you were to try to visualize, that one doesn't work very well, some air molecules, when we have a high, okay, we have more air molecules in one space. So I'm gonna draw the air molecules as these dots. And you can see they're closer together. When we have a low, they are more spread out. And they'll become closer together as they get closer to that high. So the high, they're kind of squished together, and the low, the air molecules are more spread out, um, is really the pressure that we're looking at. And then the wind, see if this one will be a nice color. The wind is going to be the movement of the air particles from high to low. That's our wind, okay? Some people that really works for them to understand and for other people, it's a little bit harder to see. Um, so if you're looking at um, some weather maps, they will show you the air pressure Again, it's the adjusted air pressure to show you where this high is and where the low is. And they use contours to show you um, what the pressure is. And so what we start to see on a map is we'll have our high. Um, I'm just gonna make an H for the high and our low as an L. And so now we're looking at a map view Okay, and this is like a bird's eye view looking down. And what they start to do is they put lines around the center of the high pressure. These lines are called isobars. Okay, so these are lines of equal air pressure. And I'll write barometric. air pressure. Okay, um, so they're much like topographic lines on a map. If you were to go around and you could walk around this circle, every point on this line, this isobar, has the same air pressure as every other point on the, the circle, the isobar. So these lines go around 
and eventually they kind of continue off into other places and then you have these lines that go around our low pressure centers, okay? Now what happens is these lines tell us what the shape is. So I actually just visualize it much like I do topographic maps. So this high would be the top of a mountain. If you were to walk up, you're going, pressure is increasing as you go up and then it decreases as you go down to the low. I erase some of this text to see if I can help you visualize it. So when I start to see it, let's see if I were to draw this in. It look kind of like this. Okay, so there's our mountain. Now if you were to imagine taking a marble or a ball and putting it on top of a mountain, the mountain is going to roll down the slope towards the low. It goes from the high to the low. And that movement is the wind. Okay, so if you are looking at a weather map and you're looking at these lines and you're not sure, just look, some of them will be labeled and you can figure out what the value is. If you're going up in value towards a center, then you know that's going up towards the high. And if you're going down, it's towards the low. Now, depending on how widely spaced or closely spaced these lines are will determine your wind speed. So the wind is going to move perpendicular to the isobars, okay? Um, and yeah, so the wind kind of moves to uh, perpendicular and if the lines are really close together, so let's say you have your high and your low and the high looks like this, I think we have really big difference between them. And I always forget to do these circles. I'm making it too much like a mountain. If they're really close together, or basically if the high and the low are close together, this will be a faster wind. Okay, just imagine these highs and lows come together. The slope is going to increase and your ball is going to roll faster down the slope. That means you get a faster wind than if they're farther apart. Um, the wind is still moving from the high to the low, but it's not going to be moving as quickly. Um, so that's the pressure gradient force in a nutshell. All right, our second factor is the Coriolis effect. Okay, this is caused by the Earth's rotation. Um, and what it does is it deflects objects that are moving above the Earth's surface, so they're not attached to the surface. Um, as they start to move, they're deflected to the right in the Northern Hemisphere and to the left in the Southern Hemisphere. So um, it creates a deflection. And then I'll just do an N and Hemi for Northern Hemisphere and to the left in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, um, this deflection that we see is greatest. Um, so deflection is greatest at the high latitude. Okay, and it's lower at the low latitudes. And it's essentially uh, non-existent. And not the poles, at the equator. Okay. All right. Um, so the really important thing for us, so it's any object, anything moving. So this includes wind. Okay, so in the Northern Hemisphere, winds tend to be deflected to the right and they're deflected to the left in the Southern Hemisphere. So how do we see that? Okay, so the easiest uh, way, one thing to remember, is just looking at our highs and our lows. Okay, so if we have our high, and we have our low, we remember that air flows away from the highs and in towards the lows. So as air is moving away 
from the high, it's going to be deflected to the right. So it comes out and around. Okay, and as air comes into the low, it is flowing in, but it's deflected to the right. So it's going to come in and be deflected. To the right. Now what happens when we start to look at this deflection around our highs and our lows, what we start to see is that the air around the high, centers of high pressure are moving in a clockwise direction. Okay, and around the low pressure, they're moving in a counterclockwise direction. Okay, um, so this is important to kind of remember this. Um, our high pressures, this clockwise uh, rotation is an anticyclone. And our counterclockwise low pressures, um, these are going to be the cyclones. Okay, so if you're trying to remember like why is it that um, the high pressures are the anticyclones and they rotate clockwise. Just remember that as you draw that air moving out, it's deflected to the right. And then when you look at the overall pattern of motion, um, you'll see it that they're coming in. And that motion, if you connect all those arrowheads, will make that counterclockwise rotation. So that's one way to keep that all together. All right, but back to the controls on wind. Um, our last factor is friction. Okay, so. Okay, so friction just slows the wind. Um, and what we find is that the frictional drag, this happens really on the Earth's surface in the first um, 1,000 meters above sea level. Um, so. And I'm gonna do that for sea level, the big S with the L through it. Um, so it slows the wind because of the frictional drag um, and the friction is highest at the surface. Um, so if you wanted to kind of look at the wind in a side view. Okay, as the air is moving across, if we just draw some lines to represent the wind, okay, and this would be the wind speed, so we're trying to just show it with these arrows. We can see that at the surface, close to the surface, the wind is slower, and it's faster at the top, and that's because at the bottom we have friction is high and then there's less friction at the top. Okay, um, so uh, this is kind of important because the winds aloft, so those winds up here are going to be faster because they have less friction with the surface. Um, these upper winds tend to be straighter and um, they will be more affected by the Coriolis effect. So these are straighter, kind of straighter, faster flowing, and then they have a higher um, Coriolis effect. Okay. Um, all right, so that is the three big controls um, for our wind direction and our movement. Uh, we talked about cyclones and anticyclones and those movements. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to talk about before we kind of move on to a new lecture is what's going on when we start to think about kind of horizontal and vertical movements together. Um, Okay, um, so we've talked about the cycling um, of everything. When we start to think about, I'll just put our high pressure here and our low pressure here, and we'll draw the Earth's surface. So this is a side view. So we'll put our house here. Um, so we remember at the low pressure, we have the air is going to be rising. 
Okay, as it rises, it's going to, this air down here is warm. As it rises, it's going to cool and condense. That can lead to clouds and precipitation. But when it gets to the top, as it starts to cool, it's going to spread out and it's going to return back to the surface. Okay, so this high, we have cool, dry air and it's going to be descending. As it descends, it warms up because we're pushing the air molecules together. They start to bump against each other and those little bumps between the molecule causes that temperature to go up. So that's what's happening at um, above the highs. But what happens, so we remember the air flows from high to low. And so then air will be moving in here and it moves out in this direction. So we start to see that there is a connection between what's happening on the surface and what's happening above these different centers. Okay, so it just starts to create some of these patterns. Um, when we see the highs here at the bottom, the air diverges, it moves away from the high, it converges at the low, but above it, at the top, once that air cools, here it is also diverging. And over here, it converges. Okay, so we can kind of see those patterns. You'll see the opposite above and below. Okay, um, so with that, we are ready to go and to start looking at different types of winds um, that we see both globally and locally.